I release every mighty blessing. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we meet again to we meet again around the word of God to share and um we believe we are going to get enlightenment um through the work of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ amen um brothers and sisters it is my sincere hope that I find you well I find you in faith and it is my sincere hope that today's word will be edifying will build us up so that we may take our place among the sanctified we may take up our inheritance among the sanctified in the name of Jesus Christ amen it is my uh, sincere hope that um, as we listen to today's word we are going to get the spiritual equipment that we need to walk worthy of God's calling so that we may fulfill every work every um, thought of faith and every good work in his power and to his glory in Jesus name so today's um, message is um, or the title of today's talk is the revelation may i also take this opportunity to thank god for the life and the ministry of um, dr ian Jovu and uh, evangelist angel Jovu. um it takes uh people who will sit and sit at god's feet and yield to his calling for such a platform to be created where the word of god is dispensed and where people um receive wisdom unto salvation so we are grateful unto god for their life and we continue to pray that god will keep them and god will protect them and god will cover them um for this generation and many generations that are ahead in jesus mighty name we pray amen um so like i said the title of today's message or the title of today's uh um teaching is the revelation the revelation the revelation the revelation let's um have our bibles close by because we are going to definitely open a lot of scripture hallelujah we are going to read a lot of scripture we're going to read a lot of not just vase, vases but portions of scripture and even chapters of the bible hallelujah because we want to be edified we want to be built up we want to be edified we want to be built up so have your bible close by um you know from uh, uh, this platform that scripture we read scripture hallelujah we read scripture scripture um the man of god always says um which is definitely a principle that is in the word of god that um a matter should be established by two or three witnesses hallelujah so we are going to make sure that every matter and every um principle that we um try to 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 establish in this message is going to be at the witness of two or three witnesses hallelujah so we are going to read scripture if you uh, hate reading scripture i pray for grace that you will love it <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah i will not say i will not say i don't know or i don't care because at divine kingdom baptist ministries we care for our brothers and sisters hallelujah and we desire that you will be built up even unto the full stature of the man jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah father we thank you for today's word in the name of jesus christ we thank you for what you have begun in our lives through christ jesus and we thank you that you will bring it unto completion even unto the day of christ in the name of jesus father we pray for grace to keep ourselves in your love thank you mighty god that you are able to keep us from falling and to present us blameless soul body and spirit even unto the day of christ in the name of jesus christ we thank you for every listener 
who is joining us now live and many others who will uh, listen to this message. We pray that, Lord, Heavenly Father, it, this will be a source of answers, not a, source, not a distraction or uh, a, um, the means by which the enemy will plant confusion in the hearts of your people. We pray that your people will be edified. We pray that your people will be built up. We pray that your people will receive enlightenment, will receive light yeah, in, unto matters of doctrine that, Lord, um, the enemy would not have any foothold in our lives, but we will, uh, by the energy that the word of God and the spirit of God provides, be able to bring down strongholds, imaginations that exalt themselves above the will of God. And so that, Lord, Heavenly Father, our obedience may be fulfilled in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, take all the glory. Amen and amen. Holy are you, God, all of creation calls you, God. Worthy is your name, we worship your majesty, awesome God, how great thou art, you my God, mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Holy are you, God, all of creation calls you God. Worthy is your name, we worship your majesty, awesome God, how great thou art, you my God, mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Lord, we bow and worship you. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All we sing, how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. There is a specific reason why I sang the songs that I just sang. I believe they are going to, you're going to find out as we continue, why I sang those songs. Of recent, I have noticed on social media and even on, with direct interaction with fellow brethren, I have, re I have, I have realized that um, we are going through a lot of trials and tribulations, um, even in this season. And many of us are questioning God. Many of us, we are questioning God. I've found people writing comments like, God does not love me, or God is not concerned about me. I remember going through a certain discussion on social media, and I found somebody who was saying, I prayed, I fasted, I sought God, but I did not get the answers that I wanted. I don't think God is for me. He might be for others. Others are getting, might be getting answers, but as far as I am concerned, God is not concerned about me. 
So I have, I had, this became a burden in my heart. And I began to ask God questions. Hallelujah. And I began to, to, to go into scripture and, and, ask, uh, and, and begin to, begin to, uh, to search uh, for answers. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is the mind of God expressed in ink. Hallelujah. The Bible, it is the mind of God expressed in ink. So, if we want to um, establish God's position on a certain matter, you can go into scripture, hallelujah, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, get to a place where you find out what is God's position as far as this matter is concerned. It could be finances, it could be marriage, it could be um, how you relate to, um, to, to your relatives, to brethren in the, in the house of God. All such matters, you can get into scripture and by the help of the Holy Spirit, you can get a rema word for any particular situation that you are inquiring God on. Hallelujah. So I went into the word of God and I began to search. I began to search. I realized that I realized a certain principle. When your perception of who God is, is skewed, is twisted, you can't relate properly to God. Hallelujah. When your perception of who God is, if you do not understand uh, that God is the sovereign, not a sovereign, I said God is the sovereign. Hallelujah. You will not understand why God does certain things the way he does them. Hallelujah. And you are not the first person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not the first person. Very soon as we get into scripture, you are going to realize that certain men of God in the scripture also were caught up in the same dilemma that you are caught up in. Even I myself, there are certain moments, especially in the past, where I found myself caught up in a rock and a hard place. And I did not... Um, I, I, I was crying and, 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 and if... if, if I remember there's a song in my native language, uh, my mother language, which is Shona, where they say, Baba Pandimire Pagaoma. It's a song by some, some, some sect in our, in, our, in, our, in our country here in Zimbabwe, where they will be saying, where I am standing, I am standing in the midst of fire. There are demons that are sucking my blood. Christians can find themselves in a place, in a, a believer can find himself um, uh, if his perception of who God is is not uh, established upon uh, the precepts of Scripture. A Christian can find himself, can find the devil cornering him into a place where he can begin to mock God. Hallelujah. Especially in such times, in these times where we are in. Where there are trials, tribulations, left, right, and center. Let's, let's, let's get into scripture. Let's get into scripture. Let me check my time so that I, 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 don't, I don't stay here for too long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, that's my intent. I don't intend to be too long. I expect to, uh, I believe by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'll be able to communicate what I feel is on my heart and be out of the way. Hallelujah. And at the end of the message, you will know uh, what is the revelation. Because there, are, there is this revelation from what I believe. And by sitting at the feet of many servants of God, 
and especially uh, our, 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 our father in this house and our angel, the angel of this house, Dr. Ian Lov, sitting at, 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 at his feet and, at, and listening to his teachings. I believe there is a central revelation. Hallelujah. Which every Christian must have from which every other revelation must emanate from which is then which then establishes uh, the believer whether in times of bliss or in times of hardship it keeps him with a straight mind if that revelation is missing a christian is at the mercy can be at the mercy of the devil and his demons. He can be tossed to and fro by winds of teachings. He, a Christian, you can find a Christian sitting in a Sangoma's house, get consulting from a Sangoma, because what that Christian lacks is the revelation, the central revelation from which every other revelation must emanate from. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. I want us to read verse 4 to verse 7. I started from verse 4 for the purposes of context. Hallelujah. I started from verse 7, from verse 4 for the purposes of context, but there's a phrase that I need us to, to zero in on in um, verse 7. 1 Corinthians, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols. So remember, 1 Corinthians and many other letters that Paul wrote, they were correspondences. He was corresponding to certain, um, certain letters that had come his way or uh, certain um, communications that had been made by certain people, of, by certain members of his apostolic team or members of a certain church, we had come to him and he would jot down a letter. So he is corresponding. Hallelujah. So he says, therefore, as to eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there, are, there may be so they may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth. And as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, through whom are all things and through, who, through whom we exist. I will take verse 6 again. Yet for us, can you say yet for us? There is one God. Right. So that, that's a very important phrase there. Yet for us, yet for us, there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, whom, uh, one Lord Jesus Christ, whom, um, they, through whom they are, sorry, and one Lord Jesus. Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge. <laughs> That's the phrase that I want. However, not all possess this knowledge. The this is the revelation. <laughs> this is where every other revelation the believer has must emanate from that there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. There is nothing the devil can do around you that will move you if you are established in this truth. And then Paul says in verse 7, however, not all possess this knowledge. <laughs> we are going somewhere. 
Hallelujah. We are going somewhere. Not all possess this knowledge. So Paul, what he is saying, he was, here he was, refer, he was uh, referring to uh, food offered. He was addressing to them about a complaint that had come through about food offered to idols. So what Paul is saying, he's saying you have, and before this he had addressed many other problems. But in this, in this uh, portion of scripture, what Paul is saying is you have this problem because amongst you, there are others who do not possess a certain central body of knowledge. And as a result, you have problems. If, when you find any Christian who is uh, distracted, who is confused, any Christian who is um, asking God the wrong questions, who is asking pastors the wrong questions? Who is doubting this and doubting that? The, it is as a result of the lack of the revelation. We are, we, are, we are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a, th um, there is a thread that goes throughout the Bible. Hallelujah. A thread, a certain, me a, a, the message of God's sovereignty is a thread that goes throughout the whole Bible. It is repeated over and over in the Bible. Hallelujah. God is the sovereign and he is sovereign over creation and events. Hallelujah. He is sovereign over what? Creation and events. Let's, let's quickly go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I pray I don't get too excited ahead of time and I don't, I don't, I don't bring out everything that I feel the Lord wants, wants us to, to talk about today. Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted and every mountain and hill be made low. And even, and uneven ground shall be made level. And the rough places a plain. I'm, on, I'm now on verse 5. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Can you say for the mouth of the Lord has spoken? The of the Lord. A, a verse 6. A voice says cry. And I said what shall I cry? <laughs> a voice says cry. And I said what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass with us, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely, surely the people are like grass. The grass with us, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Hallelujah. Go on. Up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift up, fear not. Listen to this. Lift up, fear not. Verse, that's verse 9. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Do, do, do you get what Isaiah is driving home here? He has said all flesh is like grass. Hallelujah. So, he has already pointed out that all, all your natural earthly pedigrees, they are like grass. People come and people go. But he is now establishing a certain thing, a certain truth to, to the house of Judah. 
He's, he is establishing to them that, but in your midst, there is God. In your midst, there is God. Let me say this. The object of the believer's faith is God. God is the object of the believer's faith. He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. We, 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 we do not have confidence in anything else but in who God is. Our stab- he is the stability. Isaiah says he is the stability. <laughs> let's, let's go to it. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. A few chapters, a few chapters before. Uh, uh, before chapter, chapter um, 40. Let's go to chapter 33. And hear what he says. Verse 2. O oh Lord, be gracious to, uh, to us. We wait for you. Be our arm every morning. Our salvation in the time of trouble. Are you hearing that? At the tumultuous noise, peoples flee. When you lift yourself up, nations are scattered. He's talking about God. <laughs> At the tumultuous noise, peoples flee. When you lift yourself up, nations are scattered. And your spoil is gathered. As the caterpillar gathers, as locusts leap, it is leapt out. It, it is leapt upon. The Lord is exalted. That's verse 5. For he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness. He will be the stability of your times. Abundance of salvation. Wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. <laughs> you, God is the stability of our times. I might not have enough money in my pocket, but the fact that I have God with me, that's why Paul wrote and says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I am not thrown helter skelter all over the place because of my lack of this and that. Because God is the stability of my times. Mm, I love this, 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 this verse. The Lord is exalted. Isaiah 33, 5. For he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness. He will be the stability of your times. Abundance of salvation. The wisdom, uh, wisdom and knowledge. Listen to that. He will be the stability of your times. Abundance of salvation. Wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. <laughs> when I have God, I am stable. Hallelujah. It's not the economy of my country. It's not which virus or which strain is ravaging throughout the world now. Is the, my, my, my question is, do I have God with me? Hallelujah. The sovereignty of God is a theme that is put all over the Bible. And, and, and uh, it's as if, or it is actually that way. God wants us to understand that he should be the object of our faith. It should begin with him and end with him for the believer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go back to chapter 40. Let's go back to chapter 40. Verse 10. Isaiah. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Did you hear that? His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Who, are, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Who has measured the spirit of the Lord or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult? And who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice? 
and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Jehovah. Oh, wow, wow. Thank God that we have God in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank God that we have God in our lives. He is the stability of your times. Behold, the nations are like a drop. I'm reading verse 15 of, verse, of chapter 40. And are accounted as dust on the scales. You know, when I read this, when I was reading this chapter in the morning, uh, <laughs> my heart skipped. He says, the nations are like dust on the scales. Have you ever, I, 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 sometimes I watch my wife when she's doing her morning chores. When there is dust, or even sometimes on my books, when I get to uh, my, the place where I keep my books, and sometimes if I have not touched a book for a while, it has dust. So when I get to the book and there is dust there, what do I simply do? I simply hit it to my hand and the dust is gone. <laughs> I simply pick the book and maybe hit the book onto something and whew, the dust is gone. And, and, and this, is, this is the picture that Isaiah wants us to have. Uh, this, this thing of, hey, this superpower is rising and this superpower is going to use nuclear power and destroy, <laughs> and destroy the whole world. And people now are now in a frenzy. Hey, there is this, uh, Kore this ruler from the Korean, Co Korean Peninsula who has got weapons of mass destruction who can destroy the whole world. And people are, 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 are shaking. The believer must not shake. Listen to what the Bible says. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine, fine, like fine dust. Hallelujah. 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 Lebanon would not suffice for fuel. No, I, it's beasts enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are counted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. To whom then will you liken God or what likeness compare with him? An idol, a craftsman casts it and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and casts for it silver chains. He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a skillful craftsman to set up an idol that will not move. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. And spreads them like a tent to dwell in. Who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness? This is God. Don't go into the word of God and start and, and, and try to, 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 to calculate the, num the, anti the number of the Antichrist. Hey, is the vaccine the. the, the, the the, the mark of the beast is he, you, you're trying to, to, to get into the Bible and try to, to make head and tail about events that are happening in the world. When you do not have the central revelation, the sovereignty of God in your heart, the moment you start doing that, the devil can attack you with fear. Hallelujah. The devil can attack you with fear. You begin to ask God, Funny questions. <laughs> Hallelujah. You begin to ask God funny questions and because he is, a so, he is the sovereign and, 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 and uh, his ways are set and his ways are established and he has given us a Bible, sometimes he doesn't even answer. He will let you go for years and years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Caught up in your own arrogance and ignorance. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm chapter 11. The revelation. 
Psalm chapter 11. What does the Bible say? It says, In the Lord I take refuge. This is a psalm of David. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you, how can you say to my soul? <laughs> listen, listen to what David is saying. He says, in the Lord, I take refuge. David had an understanding of the sovereignty of God. That God is all-powerful. That God is above everything. That God, you know, that is why the Bible begins by saying, in the beginning, God. Hallelujah. The Bible from the very onset, it establishes the sovereignty of God over creation and over events. Hallelujah. Because the Bible does not tell us where God was and what he was doing. It simply says, in the beginning, God. Hallelujah. So, listen to what David is saying. He had understood, I, he had, I believe he had read Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Hallelujah. He says, in the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They have fitted their arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? I've seen this scripture being used by different people wrongly. Taken out of context. Where people would be coming and praying for praying and, 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 and speaking the blood of Jesus into their foundation. Into their background. Going against the family foundations and they say if the foundations are destroyed what can the righteous do no L let me let me show you something let's quickly go to second timothy let's quickly go to second timothy second timothy second timothy because a christian is supposed to reason um Within, within the, the limits of the Bible. Hallelujah. The moment you, you don't reason or out of a, an accurate understanding of what the Bible says about who God is and who Jesus is and who the Holy Spirit is and who the believer is, you, will, you, will, you, you, will, you are like... Right, let's, let's, I will not say what I wanted to say. Verse, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. But God's firm foundation stands. Hallelujah. But God's firm foundation, what? Stands, bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. The, the, the God's firm foundation stands. Hallelujah. So, in Psalm chapter 11, verse 3, it, it, is, it, is, it, it could have been people or the enemy who was speaking, into, who was saying to, who was speaking to David and telling him, no, like a bird, flee to the what? Flee to, the, to your mountain. For behold, the wicked bend the bow. The enemy was displaying displaying uh, his, 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 his tactics and coming before David, um, David and pulling uh, this, this, this feet and that feet in order to generate fear in the heart of David. And David now writes this psalm and he says, In the Lord I have taken my refuge. Bring your best. In the Lord I have taken my refuge. Hallelujah. How can you say to my soul? How can you say to someone who is sitting inside he who sits on the circle of the earth? Flee. <laughs> how can you say? How can you say to he who is sitting inside? Remember the Bible says, for our lives are hidden in God with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Our lives are hidden in God with who? With Christ Jesus. How can you say 
to him whose life is hidden in God, flee like a bird. How can you say to one who is hidden in God, your foundations are unstable? (laughs) What can you do? How can you say to one who is standing in God, we, we, are, we, are, we are bending the bow and we have fitted our arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. The Lord is my refuge. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and he is safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why David was able to, to for, for, for over a decade, he was being pursued by, 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 by Saul. And even when he got a chance to kill Saul, he did not kill Saul because then he, he, to him he reasoned that I am in God and vengeance belongs to God. Are you with me? A person who is sitting in God is able to forgive because he thus reasons I am in God and vengeance is with God. I serve a God who is just who is just and who, say, who, who rewards men with equity, he will surely avenge on my behalf. I don't have to worry myself about what I will have to do with my enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, forgiveness can become difficult if the believer does not have the revelation. <laughs> the revelation. Hallelujah. So listen to what David now says in Psalm chapter 4. Psalm chapter 11 verse 4. He says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see. His eyelids test the children of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. And the upright shall behold his face. The revelation. The revelation. Hallelujah. 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 So, you are not the first one to be asking those 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 funny questions but the reason why you are asking those questions is because or or the reason why we are asking those questions is because we have not accepted the revelation we have not accepted the picture of who god is that the bible gives us hallelujah habakkuk chapter 3 I told you in advance that the scripture we shall read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep, Habakkuk chapter 3. I will read from verse 1. Uh, let me read from this version. It's called the, uh, the voice version. Right. This is the prayer that Habakkuk the prophet sang to the eternal one. Remember, if you are a student of the Bible, Habakkuk chapter 1 and chapter 2, Habakkuk was asking God questions. Why, why, why does evil go on? And pan- why why uh, is evil abounding in the land? And God, you are holy and you, you don't punish the wicked. And then God told him that he was going to punish the, the, uh, punish the wicked in Israel using Babylon. And he says, God, you are of pure eyes to behold evil. Why are you using one who is more evil to punish a nation which is less evil? Right? And then in, in, in chapter 2, he seems, at the end of chapter 1 and into chapter 2, he seems to be asking God to why is it, it seems that we pray and you are not answering prayer? He was, these are age-old questions. These, some of these questions that you are asking today, these are age-old questions. They have been, you are not the first one to interrogate God with these questions. He has been asked these questions 
It's just that he is God. He is a sovereign. He is not changed by, 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 by people coming to him uh, in, their, in, 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 their, in their hysteria. Hallelujah. Listen. Right. So I was just giving you a background. Right. Habakkuk had, had looked around. And it seemed that the good were suffering. Hallelujah. The good were what? Suffering. And the wicked were what? Were prospering. The Babylonian Empire was threatening to destroy Judah. Right? The Egyptian armies uh, had abandoned uh, their treaty with Jerusalem. So Israel had had a treaty with Egypt. And each, the, the Egyptians, although that was against, what, against the will of God, and, but they, in, they went ahead and had a, what? a pact with who? With Egypt. And now Babylon is threatening them, is threatening Judah. And their ally, which they, they, they sought outside the will of God, is, is, is what? Is breaking away from them. He is not showing up in the time of what? Of, 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 of war. That is the problem with some of us. We have made pacts outside the will of God. And when trouble shows up, man is like that. Isaiah chapter 40 told us. All flesh is like grass. Men change. Men cannot keep the, all their promises because men are limited. Hallelujah. So Egypt was what? Was abandoning their treaty with Jerusalem. I like that. And within Judah, some of God's own people were abandoning him for personal gain. Hallelujah. The, some people were... These days, there is what is called, people are on what I call hustle mode. You find, you look at people's status, you find, wake up, hustle. Hustle, hustle. There is every, there is every saying on, on hustling. Where you find people that have become divorced from God. People who do not have a devotion, a, a, a life of devotion to God. People who used to be sincere lovers of God, no longer have got time with God. They are busy hustling. Morning, uh, uh, there, is no, there is nothing, remember, uh, please, there is nothing wrong with, with working. Hallelujah. The Bible emphasis, emphasizes uh, the importance of work. Paul says, he who does not work, let him not what? Eat. Hallelujah. I'm talking of a hustle mode, which is demonically inspired. <laughs> Where someone is from a border from smuggling a bale of, 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 of clothes and then he gets to, 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 to Blawayo and he travels he's in Zambia before, he's, before he leaves Zambia he's already planning another trip to go to Botswana and he's all over the place. He's, he, he, he no longer has time with God. He's no longer doing business. He's no longer doing business, but he's now doing business. He's no longer doing business, B U S I N E double S, but he's now doing business, B U S Y N E double S. Hallelujah. So this was what was happening in what? In Israel. But when he asks God why. Um, um, this is, um, I'm, I'm giving you a background to chapter 3 before I read it. But when he asks God why the good suffer, God explains that in the long run they don't. Hello? The good may suffer now, but in the long run they are not suffering. That's why Paul says what? We rejoice in tribulation because we know that the testing of our faith produces what? Perseverance. And perseverance produces what? Character. And character produces what? Hope. And that hope cannot disappoint because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. When God is the object of your faith, you cannot be thrown helter-skelter by the situations and the circumstances of life. You are always well above the circumstances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why you hear Paul saying, I can do with much and I can do with little. In all circumstances, I have learned to be content. What does he say in Philippians 4 verse 18? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He had the revelation 
the center of his faith was Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So this was the situation. So God, was, God had explained to him that in the long run, you might see like people are suffering now, but in the long run, they are not suffering. God is in control of all creation. And only he can see how current circumstances fit into the greater plan. Did you hear that? God is in the center of what? Of creation. And it is he who has a wholesome perspective of how the current events will fit in the what? In the whole scope of things to the end. Are you with me? He says, um, sorry, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm giving you a, a, a rundown. And only he can see how current circumstances fit into his greater plan. With that knowledge, Habakkuk now praises God for answering the prophet's questions, for being in control and for eventually vindicating his faithful followers. So this is the background of Habakkuk chapter, chapter 3. Are you with me? He had been asking God, let me call them silly questions. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he has been telling God, why are we suffering? Hey, why, why is it the, 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 the wicked prosper? Yeah, because we know it. Most of uh, with the, in the end, Blawayo and many other places in Zimbabwe, we call them Mbinga. Most Mbinga are unbelievers. They, they are driving the latest. They, 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 uh, they, on social media, you get there and they are mocking God. They are mocking God's servants. They are mocking God's people. They are riding the, 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 the latest Ferrari, the latest Maserati or whatever, Lamborghini and what what. Are you with me? And these were the questions that, that, that Habakkuk was asking God. And God told him, I am in the center of creation. I am sitting on the circle of the earth. I have control of everything. You might not understand why I am letting things be the way they are today. But I have a wholesome perspective. I know how everything will fit together for the good. That is why Paul says everything works together. For the good of those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. Did you hear that? Everything works together for good. For those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. Listen to that statement. There is the revelation. God is the center of his faith. Everything works together for good. For those who love the Lord. Love the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why in Revelation 12 verse 11 it says they, uh, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony for they loved not their lives even unto death. They were willing to testify even to the point of death because they knew when we die in the Lord it's not really dying, it's sleeping. The next time I'll open my eyes, I'll open them for good into eternity with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, we, we, a believer is not even afraid of, 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 of death. That is why Stephen was bold. Hallelujah. The Bible says he lifted his eyes and the heavens were opened. And he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And what did he say? He didn't say, God, may you come with vengeance, rain fire upon them. He says, no, God, forgive them. They don't know what they are actually doing. But... Stephen knew that we, their stones of persecution were actually promoting him into greater glory. This momentary light affliction cannot be compared by the, way, the weight of the doxa. The, the Greek is doxa, the, the weight of the glory that awaits the believer. But th that confidence and that stability can only come if the believer has got a proper perspective of who God is. He has what I call the revelation. Hallelujah. So let's read. Uh, let's read Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1. This is the prayer of Habakkuk, the, uh, that Habakkuk, the prophet, sang to the eternal one. I have heard the reports about you. And I am in awe when I consider all you have done. O eternal one, revive your work in our lifetime. 
<laughs> so he's now he's now he's now talking to God with he's like the prodigal son. He has come back to his senses. Hallelujah. May you come back to your senses today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. May you begin to transact with God out from a place of revelation and do greater works for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have heard the reports about you and I am in awe when I consider all you have done. O oh, eternal one, revive your work in our lifetime. Reveal it among us in our times. As you unleash your wrath, remember your compassion. Hallelujah. God is on the move from Timan in the south. And the Holy One is on his way from Mount Paran. Sila. Or Sela. Pause. Hallelujah. His splendor overtakes the skies. His praise fills every corner of the earth. His radiance is like bright light. Bright light. Rays stream down from his hand. And there, his power is hidden. <laughs> you see, verse chapter 1 and chapter 2 has been asking God funny questions. Hey, why are the wicked prospering? Hey, what are you going to do with all this wickedness that is happening? You are a holy God. Why are you not punishing? Some of our prayers are like that. When are you going to remember me? Yeah, hey, you spirit of delay. Where are you? Why are you? What, what, what? There is binding and releasing and binding and releasing all over. There is no time even to praise God and even to worship God properly. There is always something that is being bound, something that is being resisted, and something that is, and, 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 and something is, uh, is back to sender, back to, back to sender. This, this spirit that is coming my way, this arrow, back to sender. You are always sending, sending. Hey, he has, now listen to the song that Habakkuk is singing, chapter, verse 4 of chapter 3. His radiance is like a bright light. Rays stream down from his hand and the, there his power is hidden. Pestilence marches before him. Plagues follow in his steps. He stands still and surveys the earth. He looks their way and the nations jump in fear. Indeed, the eternal mountains crumble. The ancient hills are humbled and bowed down. The, path, the paths he carved will last forever. His he, other versions say his ways are set. His ways are set. <laughs> you, you, hear, you, hear, you hear that his mind has changed. His ways are what? Are set. I see the tents of Kushan under attack by evil forces. The tent curtains of Midian shake throughout the land. Was your rage directed at the rivers, O eternal one? Or your anger at the rivers, O you f uh, fury, or your fury at the seas? He's referring to, to what? The encounter at the Red Sea. Is this why you drove, drove your horses, your chariots of deliverance? Your, your bow was prepared for battle. Your arrows waited for your, your arrows waited for your command. Did you hear that? He says, God's arrow was already drawn. But that arrow was waiting for who? For, who? for God's command. Hallelujah. We don't force God, <laughs> we don't force God to, to punish people as and when we want him to punish people. <laughs> he is sovereign. He is the God who spoke to, to Abraham and said, your, your children, these, your children that, uh, that I have promised you are going to leave this place and go into another nation. That will ill treat them. For 400 years until the cup of iniquity of the Amorites has been filled. Then, then they will come back and then I will use them to punish the Amorites. You see, his ways are what? Are set. <laughs> you can't confuse God. You can't blackmail him. You can't manipulate him. Hallelujah. He is not a man. Hallelujah. Then he says, uh, the, verse 11, The sun and the moon remained in their homes in the sky. As the flash of your, at the flash of your arrows, they go out. At the gleam of your spear, they go away. In fury, you marched across the earth. In anger, you trampled the nations. You went out to rescue your people, to rescue your anointed one. You shattered the head of the wicked empire. You laid him bare from, from, from thigh to neck. The warriors rushed in to scatter us, thrilled to consume their poor victims in secret. But you turned their weapons against them and pierced the heads of their warriors. 
with their own arrows. You marched on the sea with your horses, steering up raging waters and over, overwhelming waves. I listened and began to feel sick with fear. My insides turned. My lips quivered at, at the sound. Decay crept into my bones. I stood there shaking. Now I wait quietly for the day of distress. I sit and wait for the time when disaster strikes those who attacked my people. You, 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 did you hear what he said? I sit and what? And wait for the time. Who will determine the time? God. When disaster strikes those who attacked my people. He's talking of Babylon here. Then even if the fig... Ah, verse 17, somebody listen to this. Even if the fig tree does not blossom, and there are no grapes on the vines, if the olive trees fail to give fruit, and the fields produce no food, if the flocks die far from the fold, and there are no cattle in the stalls, then I will still rejoice in the eternal God. I will rejoice in the God who serves me. The Lord is my strength. He has made my feet like the feet of a deer. He allows me to walk on high places. You see? If, 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 I, I'll challenge you to read Habakkuk. It's just three, chap, three short chapters. You see how the, the character of the last chapter is different from the character of the first chapter. The prophet was... <laughs> Firing God with questions. Hallelujah. But when he came to an appreciation of the revelation, the sovereignty of God, his language changes. Hallelujah. May you gain a proper perspective of who God is in the name of Jesus. May you begin to transact go with God from a place of revelation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For the purposes of time, I will challenge you to, um, to read um, at, at your own time um, uh, Psalm chapter 73 and chap uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm, 10, Psalm 10 and Psalm 73. And then you compare Psalm 10 and 73 with Psalm 37 and Psalm 49. You will get the same thing again. Hallelujah. Where people question God. Because they lack the revelation. They lack an understanding of who God is. An understanding of uh, uh, the sovereignty of God. An understanding that in the beginning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why we have got many of these uh, different interpretations of, 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 of scripture. Um, especially prophetic scripture. As the man of God has been teaching us. Preterist, historicist, futurist, idealist. Uh, this this yeast, hallelujah. I've re I realized one thing. Oh, uh, when you look at each of these, the, the, the extent to which any of these schools of thought is devi uh, deviates from the thought comes from how, whoever modeled that school of, uh, uh, fr comes from the perspective of who God is. In the heart of the person who modeled that school of thought. Uh, the extent to which their perspective of who God is was skewed. Reflects in the extent to which that school of thought is skewed away from the truth. <laughs> you will find some people saying eh, the book of Revelation is just some, some uh, paranormal of, 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 um, of events. And uh, it's allegorical. We just, it's just a book where we can go and draw this principle and that principle. These are not real events that are going to take place. F dig deeper, you'll find that that person, his, his, um, his uh, understanding of the person of God or the existence of God is questionable. Because the moment you know that God is a person and God... God is more real than myself. According to Isaiah chapter 40, he said all flesh are like grass. They are here today and they are gone. But God is the eternal one. God is more real than Chabulika. Hallelujah. He is spirit and invisible. 
to this to this, this I, but God is more real than myself. And when I have such an understanding, it determines even my behavior and my conduct in my life on this earth. Hallelujah. 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 So, as we, as we conclude, Jesus says, I am the living bread. Jesus also said, I am the light of the world. Jesus also said, I am the door. Jesus also said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus also said, I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you, if you, if you take all these uh, phrases that I have just given you, you f- we find them mostly in the gospel according to, to, to Apostle John. The living bread, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, resurrection, and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. You realize that, uh, and he also said, I am the true vine. Hallelujah. You realize that all the aspects of, all aspects of life are covered there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when we get a full appreciation or a proper perspective of who Jesus is, we will not have problems or we will not, we will not, we will not uh, be a fearful people, a, a, a disoriented people, a confused people, a people that are that, 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 that are distressed, a, a backslidden people, a people that are turning away from God and running after uh, the philosophies of men that are being propagated today. Hallelujah. Because we have the living bread. We have the light of the world. We are not groping in darkness. Hallelujah. We, 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 we are not groping in darkness. We have a door. Hallelujah. We have the door. We have the good shepherd. We have the resurrection and the life. So we face, life, we face death with confidence. That is why Paul says, death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. The grave, where is your hold? <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, Revelation says, blessed, from now onwards, it will be said, blessed are those who sleep in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the, the believer is supposed to wear what I call the helmet of salvation. The helmet of the hope of salvation. Hallelujah. The believer is supposed to wear what I call what? The helmet of the what? Of the hope of what? Of salvation. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, you don't need further instruction. Uh -uh. Really? Listen Listen to that statement. It's very important. You don't need further instruction from us or anyone else for that matter regarding how the seasons and the times will play out. (laughs) These days, there there is a rush. There is a rush. Who is the Antichrist? Who is the what? what? Hey, seven years from now, five years from now, two years from now. Hey, this and that. People are fearful. Hey, have you, have you, hey, did you take the vaccine? Did you take the vaccine? You are, you, you are in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, Paul is saying, now, brothers and sisters, you don't need further instruction from us or anyone else for that matter regarding how seasons and times will play out. Verse 2. That is because you know the truth well enough. Oh, uh, th- this is my cry. If only the church, if only the elect, if only the remnant in this season, we will come to a full appreciation of the truth. Hallelujah. The day of the Lord will rest onto the scene and surprise us like a thief in the night. People will be going about their business, chanting, all is well, all, all is at peace. 
And in the next moment, ruin and destruction will suddenly seize them as labor grips a woman about to give birth. For them, there will be no escape. My brothers and sisters, it will be different for you. Hallelujah. You do not dwell in darkness so that that day will not se- so that so that so that day will not surprise you like a thief the antichrist will not surprise the belie- a believer who is who is in who has the word of god richly dwelling in his heart the, he can surprise anyone else, but he will not surprise the believer who has the word of God richly dwelling in him. The mark of the beast will not surprise the believer who, is, who has got God as his anchor and his refuge. This is what Paul says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even if you don't have a man of God coming to you and trying to calculate for you the years and telling you how many years are remaining, if you are in God, the, the Antichrist or the beast, if he is to come in our generation, he will not surprise you. You are not in darkness. You are in the light. Hallelujah. Then he says, um, For you are all children of light. You are sons and daughters of the day. We are not created. We are not created of night. Nor are we owned by darkness. So then, let's not give in to sleep or wander around in a stupor, as some do. But let's stay awake in control. You see, sleepers drink through the night and drunkards drink the night away. But since we belong to the day, we should stay sober and in control covered with a breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us. You see where it's ending? For God has not destined us. He is chosen to face his wrath, but to be the heirs of salvation through our Lord Jesus, the anointed, the liberating king who died for us. So regardless of whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. So support one another. Keep building each other up as you have been doing. Hallelujah. The revelation. The revelation. The revelation. Hallelujah. God is sovereign. God is sovereign over creation and over all events. Hallelujah. God is never caught by surprise with the events of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word, the Logos, the reason behind things. Hallelujah. The same was with God in the beginning. Nothing was made, was made without Him. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, and, 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 and it is speaking of Jesus, the word he says, darkness cannot comprehend. Darkness cannot co- overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you read the book of Revelation, chapter 1, you will realize that, may I say, that book is not, the word revelation is from the Greek word apocalypsis. Hallelujah. And it is made of two, it's a compound word which is made of apo and lipsis. Apo, which means to lift. Hallelujah. And lipsis, which means a, a veil or a covering. So it can be translated that it is the lifting of the veil. Hallelujah. Or the unveiling. The implication of the book of Revelation is not, to, is not primarily to show us events. Hallelujah. If you go into the book of Revelation to look for events when this and that is going to happen, it is, that is the secondary aim of that book. The primary aim of that, that book is here he, here he is. It is 
It, it, it even begins with verse 1. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. And primarily, the book is revealing Christ. Hallelujah. And secondarily, because Jesus is the beginning. Hallelujah. When you get an understanding, as, as Jesus is revealing himself through the pen of John, hallelujah, we then can add, we are then able to, uh, we can then from there pick events and things that we can expect will happen as, uh, to, as we approach his second advent. But the first, the, the primary aim of the book is to reveal Jesus Christ. So until you have got a full appreciation of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, you will be scared dead in these times. But if you understand that Christ, the, Christ is in me, and because he is in me, I have hope that cannot despite, dis disappoint, which is the hope that I will share in his glory in eternity. This is what the book of Revelation is primarily coming to do. Because remember, this book was given to people who were, who were going through persecution. Hallelujah. So it, wa it was coming to comfort and to console. Hallelujah. And now we are facing, we are drawing closer and closer to persecution. And I believe that this book, this book of Revelation and also the book of Hebrews... Are, are, are books that we should read and meditate in even in these times. But you will realize that both books, the book of Hebrews, uh, the book to the Hebrews and, the, 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 and Revelation, they all begin by uh, painting a clear picture of who God and Jesus Christ are and the place of the believer in the scheme and the plan of things as God predestined them. Hallelujah. 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 So the, the, the book is not primarily uh, the lifting of the veil of upcoming events, but the unveiling of Jesus Christ. And that is why it's called revelation. It's one revelation. Everything in that book must be understood from a place of understanding who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ. One revelation of him. The book was given, like I've already pointed out, to people who were under intense persecution at the, at the time as a tremendous comfort or consolation to the bond, serv to the bond servants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, there is another term there, bond servant. Hallelujah. What is a bond servant according to scripture? Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 12 to 17 explains what is a bond servant. A bond servant was when a, a Hebrew got a Hebrew slave. A Hebrew, a Hebrew master got a Hebrew slave and he worked for him for six years. After six years on the seventh year, he was supposed to re release that servant with a reward. But that servant had an option. He could say, I love my master and his family. And I am willing to work for him for the rest of my life. And the, the, the master would take what, what is called an owl or a, a sharp instrument. And he would take the servant to the door. And he would pierce his ear. Pierce the, his or her ear. The ear of that servant. And pin it to the door. And the servant will remain with a mark, that physical mark on their ear. And they would be marked that this man had an opportunity to at freedom, but he chose to he willingly chose to serve his master for all his life. Hallelujah. Amen. So these are the people that do transactions with God. People who have willingly yielded and surrendered to God. People who put God in his rightful place. That is why John was the one who received that revelation. He was a bond servant. Hallelujah. He, 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 he 
interacted with God from a place of, 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 of master and servant. Hallelujah. He knew the sovereignty of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the book of Revelation should be understood from, the, from that place where we understand the sovereignty of God. That God is in control. That is why when you read it, you will find that uh, Jesus, Jesus is depicted as, as one with hair that is white as snow. Hallelujah. What, what does that mean? He is, he is depicted as the ancient of days. Hallelujah. The eternal one, he who was, who is, and who is to come. Hallelujah. We, the one who is in control of all things, all creation and all events. And he, what, what, what again? He is depicted as one with eyes like what? Like fire. There is nothing that, 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 that is hidden from Jesus. Hello? I hear people saying, God does not see me. God, God, God does not see my welfare. God, I, no, he has got eyes like fire. He sees through things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows the intents, of the, your, the intents of your heart. He knows what you are going to say before you even say it. Hallelujah. Then he is depicted as, the Bible says his, his feet are like what? Like bronze. Polished bronze. What does that mean? It means two things. It's a picture to both the believer and the unbeliever. When Jesus comes, he's going to come with a reward for the believer and recompense for the unbeliever. I, I mean, he's going to come with reward for the believer and he's going to, his wrath is going to be upon the unbeliever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because bronze in the Bible represents what? Judgment. That is why the altar was made up, was made of what? Of bronze. The altar outside the tabernacle, it was made of what? Of bronze. When the, where they did the sacrifices. So it, it, when his, it, the Bible says his feet are like bronze. You are, as the believer, when I see such feet, I know that G God sent Jesus Christ in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin, to condemn sin in the flesh. So there is now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We live not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Hallelujah. But when the unbeliever sees the same feet, the picture, that picture again is to the, to the unbeliever. It means that God, God is a just God. Hallelujah. No sin goes un, unpunished. For the believer, there is no condemnation because his sins were punished in Jesus Christ. But he who refuses to believe, when Jesus comes, he's, he is going to come with God's wrath on the unbeliever. Hallelujah. So, our, that, that should be what anchors our attitude. When we read what, with the opening of the seals and the trumpets and everything else, we should remember that Jesus is standing in the midst of the seven lampstands. What are the seven lampstands? He says the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So Jesus is, sees what is happening to the whole body of Christ. He is aware of what is happening. He is not ignorant of the affairs or our, our current state of affairs now. Hallelujah. He is not ignorant of what is happening to what is happening in your family. He is not ignorant of your financial status. He is aware of everything. Hallelujah. And he says he has got a golden sash. A golden sash. What does a golden sash speak to? It speaks of the eternity of Christ. The divinity of Christ, rather. Hallelujah. It speaks of the divinity of Christ. Hallelujah. The divinity of Christ. He is divine. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. He is from everlasting to, to everlasting. Hallelujah. So what, is, what, what am I trying to say in all this, in all this hour of, of speaking before you? I am saying Jesus is the revelation. Hallelujah. Jesus is the what? The revelation. See him in the proper light. Hallelujah. 
and reason as a believer from that standpoint in any direction whether you are you are talking about prosperity you are talking about finances you are talking about ma- marriage you are talking about this you are talking about that hallelujah you are in jesus you are in the lord hallelujah hallelujah jesus he says i am the first in the, in revelation chapter 1 i am the first and the last Let, let's just quickly read through that chapter i know we have overshot our time Let's just quickly read through it. Revelation chapter 1. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the anointed. Hallelujah. The liberating king. An an account of visions and the heavenly journey. God granted this to him so he would show his followers the realities that are already breaking into the world and soon will be fulfilled. Through his heavenly messenger, he revealed to his servant John signs and insight into the into these mysteries. Hallelujah. The, uh, hallelujah. Let me also say, when the Bible says soon, when you understand, when you understand God as sovereign and as the creator of, of everything, hallelujah. You 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 reason that that soon is re, is a relative term. And it is relative to God who is giving this revelation. So we will not, we will not uh, scramble over each other trying to calculate and instilling fear in the, in, the, in the heart of this one and in the heart of that one. God said it, it, uh, the, the time is at what? Is at hand. Behold, it will happen soon. And that soon is relative to, to God who is giving this what? Revelation. The same God to whom a day is like a thousand and a thousand is like a day. You understand? So I'm not afraid. I have my confidence based on the character of the God that I am serving. The God who works out what? Steadfast love, righteousness, and justice in, 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 the, in the whole earth. He is my boasting. He is my confidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not allow the circumstances of your life to, to, to minister fear into you. Do not allow the circumstances of your life to get you into, into, into idolatry and into necromancy and sangomas and, and, and running all over the place. If God be for us, who can be against us? That should be the central revelation of the believer, especially now that we are in the end times. Hallelujah. John in 10, verse 2. John in 10 gave witness to the word of God and to the glorious truth revealed about Jesus, the anointed one, the chosen ruler, by carefully describing everything he saw. Just as a footnote, the word used as witness there in chapter 2 is the word matureo in the Greek, which means matureo in the Greek, that's where we get the word matai. Hallelujah. So when he says John was a witness to the word of God, it simply means that John was, a, was one who, was give, who had given himself completely and was witnessing even if he was under the threat of death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can read what Jesus said when he sent his disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 to 39 in your own time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, that's, that, that, that's just a footnote there. John in turn gave witness to the word of God and to the glorious truth revealed about uh, Jesus. Other versions say John gave witness to the word of God and to the uh, John gave witness to the word of God and to the, uh, to the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right? What does it mean when, the, when he says God gave, John gave witness to the word of God? The word of God pertains to the character of Jesus. John was giving witness of what? To what? The character of Jesus. The character of Jesus must be understood by the believer before he starts calculating the number of the beast or whatever or anything else. The character of who Jesus is must be properly understood. Hallelujah. And it also says John gave witness to the what? John gave witness 
to the message of Jesus Christ. The testimony of Jesus Christ pertains to his message. That one is clear. But the word, when he says John gave witness to the word of God, it pertains to the character of Jesus. Right? What, what is this character of Jesus? Jesus Christ is the personal wisdom and power in union with God. He is God's minister in creation and God's government of the universe. The cause of the world's life, both physical and ethical. Who for the procurement of man's salvation put on human nature in the person of Jesus the Messiah shone forth clearly from his words and his deeds. That is the character of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Blessings come to those who read and proclaim, uh, that's verse 3, these words aloud. Blessings come to those who listen closely and put the prophetic words recorded here into practice. The final is approaching. I join to the seven churches in Asia. May you experience God's favor and rest in the peace that comes from the one. Hey, listen to that one, my dear brother. May you exper experience what? God's favor and rest in the peace that comes from the one who is. The one who was and the one who is coming. From the seven spirits, the perfect spirit, constantly before God's throne. And from Jesus, the anointed, the witness who is true and faithful. The first to emerge from death's cold womb. The chosen ruler over all kings and rulers of the earth. Did you hear that? May you... So, the, the, the believer's peace is in understanding. Hello? That he is in, one, in the one who is and the one who was and the one who is coming. God who has power over the past, the present, and the future. That is a, a, a transliteration of the name Yahweh there. Hallelujah. And the seven spirits constantly before God's presence. And Jesus, the anointed, who is the true and faithful. You see that, 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 that word is coming again. True and faithful. To Jesus, the anointed, the witness. Remember, I told you that the word witness is the word matureo in the Greek. One who was willing to die for his testimony. And, and then he says, I, he has emerged from what? From the grave. Never to die again. Hello? To the one who loves us. Hello? Before you start calculating anything in the book of Revelation, remember God loves you. To the one who loves us and liberated us from the grip of our evil deeds. Through his very own blood. Hallelujah. He wrote our salvation in his blood. Hallelujah. We established us. Can you say established? We established us to be his own kingdom and priests for God, his father. May glory and power be his throughout all ages. Amen. Verse 7, look, he is coming with the clouds in glory. He will capture every eye, even of those who pierced him through. Listen to that. He will capture every eye, even those who pierced him will see him. Hello? All the nations of the earth will be pierced and with grief, and will be pierced with grief when he appears. Yes, may all this be done according to his plan. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega. He is now speaking. The very beginning and the end. The one who is, the one who was, and the one who is coming. The all-powerful. I join your brother, that's verse 9, who shares with you this journey in persecution and the establishment of the kingdom and endurance in Jesus. Did you hear that? I join your brother who shares with you this journey in persecution. And the establishment of the kingdom and endurance in Jesus was on the island called Patmos because of the ministry of the word of God and my testimony about Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, the first day of the week, and I heard a voice behind me. It sounded like the blast of a trumpet. Hallelujah. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The very beginning, he is repeating again. Hallelujah. He, this is the message. This is the revelation. Hallelujah. Before we try to decipher anything else, this is, John is saying, this is what must be at the center of our hearts. Hallelujah. Yeah. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the very beginning and the very end. Make a book of what you see. 
write it down and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, Ephesus, Simna, Pegamum, Tyatra, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. When I turned around to see what sort of voice, wow, this was, that was addressing me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And among the lampstands, I saw one like the son of man right in front of me, dressed in a long robe. Across his chest was draped a golden sash. I told you that represents his divinity. Hallelujah. His head and hair were pure white, representing that he is the ancient of days. And we, I think we also know if you have watched uh, movies that is to do with uh, uh, litigation or courts or even on the news, you have seen judges wearing that, that white thing, that white um, whatever they put on their heads. It represents, uh, it, 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 in a way it represents, it's, it's, it's a symbol of a judge. It represents wisdom, power, and also in this sense, in Jesus, it also represents his eternity has been there. He's the ancient of days. Hallelujah. His head was and hair were pure white. White as wool and white as snow. And remember, he's not like, he's not like our human judges. He's, he's a pure judge. Because I, I remember I, I said it also, that hair is, it represents him as also as what? As judge. And he, he, when he judges, he judges from a place of knowledge. Hallelujah. His eyes blazed like a fiery flame. His feet gleamed like bright polished bronze, purified to perfection in a furnace. His voice filled the air and sounded like a roaring waterfall. He was overwhelming. Wow. He, he held seven stars in his right hand. Listen to that, my dear friends. From his mouth darted a sharp-edged sword, and his face shone a, shone a bright light like the blinding sun. When I saw him, I fell at his feet. It was, though, it, it was the, as though I were, I were dead, but he reached down and placed his right hand on me. Listen to what Jesus says. This is not the time for fear. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I entered the realm of the dead, but see, I am alive now and for all the ages, even ages to come. Amen. I possess the keys to open the prison of death and Hades. Now write down all you have seen, all that is and all that will be regarding the mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand. Regarding the mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand. And of the seven God lampstands, the seven stars are heavenly messengers who preside, who preside over the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches themselves. Do, do you get the revelation? Before you go to chapter 2 and you start saying, who is the Antichrist? Yeah, the papacy, yeah, what, what? And you start pointing other people's uh, establishments and organizations and putting them in that place and that place. Are you founded in the revelation that is depicted in, verse, in chapter 1? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will give us encounters in this season that will strengthen our faith. I pray that the Lord will send into our lives men and women who will supply what is lacking in our faith so that we may be built up and we may be built up among the sanctified and take up our inheritance i pray that uh, we will grow in our revelation of who jesus is hallelujah 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 in concluding revelation chapter 21 verse Five. And the one who sat on the throne announced to his creation, See, I am making all things new. Write what you hear and see, for these words are faithful and true. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will see to it that the thirsty drink freely from the fountain of the water of life. To the victors will go this inheritance. I will be their God and they will be my children. It will not be so for the cowards, the faithless, 
the sacrilegious, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all those who deal in deception, they will in inherit an eternity in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Hallelujah. The revelation. Is that, is the that should be the center of our reasoning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, my last portion of scripture. And as I close, Colossians, listen to what Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Did you hear that? So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. That word light there can be translated, can be translated holiness, truth, glory, or life. Hallelujah. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins. Listen Listen to this from verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That, that in everything he might be preeminent, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to, recon and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in, or in heaven, making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel, not shifting from the revelation, not shifting from the hope of the gospel, that you heard which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Hallelujah. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us today. Many of us have been distressed, struck down, and confused. Many of us have been uh, in disarray, our minds have been scattered all over the place. The enemy had erected strongholds in our minds and imaginations that exalt them, themselves above the will of God. But Father, we have heard today from your word that Jesus is the revelation, that Jesus is at the center of it all, that Jesus, that as we, as we continue to believe in Jesus and keep ourselves in your love, you are able to bring us to the, to, to the day of the Lord, complete and holy. Father, no matter, what, no matter what we are going through in this life, no matter what we are going through in this season, we turn from whatever uh, state of mind that is contrary to your word, to take up another mind, to trust in you, to put you as our confidence, to put you as our reason of boasting, to put you as our reason of rejoicing, to put on the helmet of salvation, 
and go through this season with confidence because father you are sovereign you are master you are the first and the last you call the end from the beginning you, you are the revelation you are the center of it all you hold everything together by your power father we thank you for today's word may it con may you continue by your spirit to cause us to see light in your light that oh god we may continue to grow in this revelation in the name of jesus christ we pray amen and amen we abide in the word of god and the word of god abides in us we produce good fruits for the kingdom of god the love of god the father the fellowship of the holy spirit and the grace of our lord jesus christ be with us all our families our communities our cities our countries our continent and the whole world in jesus mighty name amen the lord bless you na ufalme wake mtu mmoja kwa wakati